afternoon. I've been uh, tinkering with one of my new toys. I got this little Maytag engine. It's a Maytag 92 over uh, the flea market over the weekend. I was going to show you how to take the flywheel off without a lot of fuss. Uh, normally, Normally all you do is uh, have to pull this cotter key out. And you take this nut off. Don't don't loosen these nuts here. They can cause you some trouble. Tight. Anyway, go ahead and take this castle nut off there. Got a little burr work done with it. Come on. I kind of want to peek under the flywheel here just to see what's lurking under there. You can kind of see some of the stuff with this access plate off, but. Oh. Not all the things are visible, there might be some nastiness lurking under there. Anyway. I really hurt. I ran my damn little stick under my fingernail today. Boy, that thing really hurts. Anyway, um, normally what I do is I take a block of wood and kind of just gently tap back and forth on here. If it comes off, then you're around just see if they come off. Some of those are on there really tight. Yeah, okay. Well that's stage one. You can get anywhere. Stage two is you go ahead and you put the uh, castle nut back on. Or you could just not take it off. Just so we don't have an accident. Probably gonna take the ignition more off. You should do that on any gas engine you work on. Except maybe a car. Okay. Anyway, you tighten that back up. There's a little burr working up under there. Had this off before. Keep the threads. Anyway, you tighten that till it's approximately level with the shaft. Maybe the shaft is just a tiny bit lower. What I do is I get a hammer. <clears throat> a dead blow hammer would be better, but all I got is this one right now. I'm too worried about it. All I do is I grab the thing like this, kind of pick it up, just give it a, a firm tap. If that fails, next thing you can do is take some 2x4s or 4x4s and support the engine around the edge of the flywheel. Not out here, up in here. And anyway, you'll hang the thing on your bench, about a, maybe an inch above the bench. Again, tighten that nut down until it's even, get a block of wood. Just tap on it, eventually it'll drop down. The extra pressure will pull it down. Okay, let's peek under here. Oh, let's see if you're... I've been having a lot of issues with... There we go. A lot of issues with... Keeping my stuff in frame. I need a monitor. Okay. There's a 
handy little doodad. It's just a kind of a folding knife, but it uses those carpet knife or those box cutter blades. It's kind of nice. I go through a lot of blades. Or I'm always sharpening my knives. And it's always on dumb stuff. So I started, I bought one of those, started using those blades. And I just throw them in a box. Later I use them as scrapers and stuff. Careful, there's a little there's a little key under here. This side, the two magnets, the ring. Here's the governor. When it flies out, it moves this lever back, and then it misses hitting this ignition uh, points trip lever. This is a coil. Right here is the terminal block that goes out. And uh, here's the condenser, the points. There's only a couple wires under there. One goes from the coil or to the condenser lead. The other one lead goes from here to the points. That's all there is under there. This is in pretty good shape. It's a little dirty. Gunk. Looks like it's some gunk that's run down there. Really not a lot to see under here. There's, I I have never taken one of these out, these magnets out of here for any reason. Uh, they probably only go in there one way, but just be aware that this side's got the bigger plate. This side's got the smaller one, the screws. And, uh, three recessed screws, and there's just a normal screw bolt. Oh, take it back, there's another bolt there. I've never seen that before, I'm paying attention. So there's five screws under there, they're bolts. I always take it. Wipe this stuff down, WD-40 on it, or some sort of pep train well. Just clean all this crap up. The condenser's just held in here with a little strap with two screws. This is pretty simple, really. Not sure how you. Uh... Okay. And all these are just screwed in real carefully. So if you're going to take some apart, make sure that you find a screwdriver that fits real well. Uh, if you don't, have when it fits her well. What I do is usually they're too loose and they, you know, they, they're in the screwdriver like blade, uh, slot of the bolt like that, and they're having them. As you run them in the grinder or the belt sander down until they fill in and start leveling out and uh, fit better. It's not worth screwing up a screw on something like this. And some of these screws are very soft. There's some over where the carburetor is, there's some little brass screws and they're very soft. You have to have a well famous screwdriver. Some screwdrivers aren't that expensive. There's no reason not to modify one to make it fit. There's a little dirt under here. Not that major. There's a I, think I mentioned earlier that this thing had been repaired. Somebody welded it, they didn't do a very good job on this side, they did a good, good job. I might trench that out, weld it back, and then sand that down. It won't hurt anything. It's, it isn't perfect, but nothing ever is. Anyway, that's all it really is under there. That was interesting. Go ahead and snap this back on. Find your keyway, and then there's a little keyway there. Let's go ahead and line that back up real carefully. Try not to rattle it around in there too much. There we go. Great oil on there too. There's a little burr on there. I've mean, seen it. It's on the very beginning of the shaft. Somebody obviously hit the thing with a hammer. And it's starting to wear off. Either the nuts wearing off or the screws wearing off. There's a little hole in there where that cotter key goes. Just tighten that up. right there actually it's just a little bit past it tighten it up too much there we go
little play in the end. aircraft industry you don't reuse cotter keys it's a big no no if you're in the farm industry it's fair game spread that out a little bit that key is really short it ought to be a lot longer it doesn't fit really super well Play this way, it might be missing a shim or something. You never know what happens when people take these apart. I don't like that nut being loose in here. Maybe it's just it is. Well, the real test is to see if we can get it to start back up. This lead is seeing better days. Really pretty rough. Um, I think this one's missing. There's sometimes there's a little clamp here, and that lead kind of doubles back and heads that way. This one had a coating on it of some kind. It looks like a, maybe a varnish or shellac or black. Well, it wasn't be plastic. Something. Okay. Valve up here, carburetor valve. Oh, let's see if it'll start again after I messed with it. I really didn't touch anything. Um, again, don't fiddle with these screws or these bolts here that holds that flywheel on that um, on that little adapter. And a friend of mine told me that that's the timing on those is very critical. He said a degree or two and they won't run. I I've never had a reason to take them off, so I don't worry about it. Okie dokie. Well, another successful mission. I'll probably clean that up. That's actually in pretty good shape. Like I said, that you can see it or not, there's a big gouge out of there, one side there, where somebody, I bet somebody dropped that thing. It's kind of sad. I don't know when that was made. There's a, I believe there's a serial number calculator on the web. There's probably some documents somewhere too. That's okay. I can look it up later. It's not, I'm not gonna die if I don't look it up this second. Uh, the main purpose of this was just to show you how to, how to pop that flywheel off. It's not a lot of fuss. If you feel like you're getting too rough with the thing, just stop. Um, get a friend that's maybe a mechanic or a machinist or just uh, look on the web. There may be some other ways. I've always used those uh, three ways. I always start out with the block of wood and just tap on the thing and you just tap back and forth. And it, it may take a while. I mean, well, at one place I worked, we had big standby generators that were uh, propane powered that sat on con little concrete pads outside in shelters. And the starters were burned down in them. And you had to take the flywheel off to replace the starter. And um, I would just take a... I had a one, one foot long 4x4 four four that I just would tap around on there. Other guys over there with pullers and pounding on them with hammers. And the boss caught me doing that one day. He said, well, how come nobody else does this? He says, I don't know. I'd... So needless to say, I had to... He conned me into showing other guys how to do it. I'd mentioned it before, but, you know, you can you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. And that's fine, you know. Everybody's got their own way of doing things. Uh, so I always use the block of wood first. If that doesn't work, like I said, back that nut off till it's pretty much flush. And maybe a little bit proud of that shaft. You want to protect the shaft. You can replace the the nut easy enough the shaft is a different story and then give it a pick it up with your hand on the one edge like I showed you and give it a, a firm smack you don't gotta beat it into the ground it may take a couple whacks um, 
The other thing that might help you before you start pounding on the thing is to tip it up on in and put some penetrating oil in there. There's a lot of good penetrating oils. Uh, you know, WD-40's been around forever, but everybody loves WD-40. Uh, actually, if you want um, a product I will recommend, I'm not a big recommender of things, everybody's got their own ideas, is uh, it's a product called Croil. It's expensive, it's hard to find. You see it at a lot of the, uh, if you go to a gun show, a lot of guys use it there. It's a pretty good product. It's very expensive though and it's hard to find. Uh, but it, and it, and it does have an unusual smell, but it does creep into places. It's formulated to break into places. There's some other penetrating oils. Uh, there's Liquid Ranch, and, and I'm sure I'm forgetting some of the other ones. Uh, there's probably some homemade ones guys are using with, you know, kerosene and a drop of, you know, blood from a viper and some other mysterious things. Uh, those are the ones you can get on a shelf, kind of, and they work. Anyway, put some of that on there before you get to pound on the thing. Another thing that might help you, I don't recommend it right off the bat, is uh, you may want to warm that up with a torch or I would I would get a uh, maybe a heat gun or hair dryer and warm that, that part underneath the uh, castle nut up. It might expand a little bit and break it loose. Um, there's a number of ways to uh, get frozen parts apart. Uh, like I said, if you have a friend that's a machinist or car mechanic, uh, <laughs> mostly car mechanics, they, they run into hundreds of frozen fixtures and bolts a day working on stuff just because cars are out of the elements. They can uh, show you what to do. And the other thing you can do, like I said, the third thing you can do is prop it up on some blocks of wood and then you know kind of hang the engine on the blocks of wood. I've got some that are cut. And uh, it... Uh, I've got a little piece of um, kind of rubbery foam. I think it might have been an old seat out of a back of an old Chevy or something. And I just slide that underneath there so when the thing falls it just kind of bounces off that rubber. But you can tap on that again on there. Um, just don't get too rough with it. So There's no reason to be unprofessional. Anyway, have a question or comment, feel free to leave it. Um, go ahead if you like. Uh, subscribe to my channel. I'd like to thank the people that uh, send me email. I get uh, quite a few emails a day um, about this, that, and other thing. This is one of my, I don't know, hobbies slash professions, I guess, would be it. Um, I guess if you get paid for something, you're a professional. And uh, I've worked on a number of these over the years. I'm not going to make a big series of videos. There are a number of good series on the on the system already. Um, and since I can't keep anything in frame, it would probably be more aggravation than anything. Um, anyway, knock yourself out. Go out and find some old engines to play with. There's plenty of them. You don't have to have an old Maytag. You, know, you can have a, uh, you know, there are plenty of older Briggs and Strattons. There's a lot of interesting little engines that are fun to play with. And uh, whatever. Neighbors, they'll do anything to see what I'm doing. Anyway, uh, like I said, there's a number of little engines to play with. You know, there's uh, like the Briggs, the 5S is a fun little engine. There are th thousands and thousands of them that were made, and they've got different configurations. Um, the N, there's a lot of Ns made little older look, two of them. If you like something a little more uh, older or more antique-y. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Anyway, so I'll let you go. Like I said, um, you can go out and find some old engines to play with. Um, there's plenty of parts. Um, there's plenty of people that do this for fun. There are a lot of shows. I got a show coming up in a week or two where it's just to just to get together. Um, everybody drags their junk out and throws it in their pickup and goes down to this uh, field out in the middle of nowhere. And we just kind of sit around under the umbrellas and swap a few parts. No money really changes hands. It's not very organized or anything. It's just kind of a get together for the fun of it. I might take my camera down this year 
and just walk around and see what people got. People share what they've what they've learned. I used to write a lot of notes in notebooks, and uh, one year I took a bunch of those notebooks, and I uh, they were spiral notebooks, so they were easily disassembled. I took them all apart. They weren't any really any order. They were kind of in order of how I worked on the engines and. They were dated, but they were, you know, I worked on a Briggs a few days, and then I went over to some Maytag and then some other stuff. So they are more of dates than they were of how I worked on stuff. Anyway, just for fun, I uh, photocopied those and passed a few of them out. I got a good response out of that. You guys found that pretty interesting. It's kind of before the Internet, though. It got real popular, so nowadays most of that stuff's on the Internet. So the notebooks just sit on the shelf, more of a reminder to me on how to do stuff. Well, I suppose I've gibby-gabbed long enough, and you've probably <laughs> clicked the pause button or went on to the latest cats and talking video. Anyway, have a good day. Take it easy.